Hi, I've been playing the new Rimworld DLC a lot on Twitch lately, and I've had a lot of new players stop by and ask for advice, so I thought I would make a video. These are 20 quick tips and tricks that I wish that I knew when I started playing Rimworld. Without further ado, let's get into it. Number 1. If you're mining in a mountain, you risk infestations. Infestations can only spawn in an overhead mountain tile. If you go to the bottom right and click this button, the game will highlight the overhead mountain tiles in dark green, and the thin mountain roofs as well as the man-made roofs in light green. This way you can easily check if there's a risk of an infestation near your base. Number 2. You can drag your pawns in the top bar of the screen with your left mouse button to reorder them. I always like to have it ordered based on shooting skill, but it's up to you. Number 3. Hold shift to queue up tasks for your individual pawns. This way you can make them complete several tasks without them getting distracted by sleep, recreation or leverage cannibal meals. Number 4. You can steal insect jelly at night while the bugs are still sleeping. Insect jelly does not only fill the pawn's hunger bar, but also the recreation bar. Besides that, it's a great trading good that is wanted by a lot of different kind of traders. Number 5. Every time you claim something, it adds the area around the object to your home zone. Your pawns will fight fire in the home zone, but also clean. You can turn this automatic home zoning off by going to the buttons in the right bottom corner and clicking this one. Now your pawns won't waste time traveling across the map to clean a spot of dirt. Number 6. The different stone types actually matter a lot in RimWorld. Look at the chart on the screen for example. Granite is the strongest one and has the most HP, followed by limestone. Marble might not be the strongest but it has the most beauty, so making your walls, furniture or art out of it will increase the beauty in the room. Sandstone is the quickest type to work with, so great for example with laying flagstone floors outside. And then there are slate blocks. They are the weakest and also lightest stone type in the game, so use this to your advantage. Number 7. Talking about stone furniture, do not make your bed out of stones. Look at this wooden bed of normal quality for example. It has a rest effectiveness of 100%. The same goes for plasteel, silver, gold, jade and steel. Stone beds however have a rest rate of 90% at normal quality. So it takes you longer for your pawn to sleep and get fully rested. Meaning they can do less work than pawns with a non-stone bed. Number 8. You can use one chair for multiple stations. Look at this setup for example. The chair is used for the table, for stone cutting and for the chest table at the same time. Two pawns can even use one chair at the same time. Number 9. Different ground types have different walking speed. Hold your cursor over the ground and have a look at the left bottom corner for the walk speed. You can use this to your advantage by setting up behind a slow type of ground, like sand or water, so your enemies will take longer to reach you. Number 10. Talking about movement speed, you can check the movement speed of any pawn, mechanoid or animal by clicking on the info tab. You can then check the move speed and compare it to a prey or enemy to see if you can outrun them or not. Keep in mind that the move speed changes accordingly to the damage you have taken, to the clothing your pawn wears, the traits your pawn has and many more factors. Number 11. When you spawn, go to your health tab and change the meds to herbal medicine or doctor care. This way you don't waste your good medicine on minor injuries like bruises or so. You can also enable self-tent, but it does come with a penalty to the tent quality. So only self-tent if you have no other choice or if your other pawns are a lot worse than your doctor. Number 12. Staying on the topic of tending, the tent quality will be higher if you have a light source. If you don't have a light source like a torch or lamp, you can remove the roof tile above the pillow on the bed. This way you'll have the same brightness in the tile as outside. You can check the brightness in the left bottom corner. Number 13. Since the 1.3 update was dropped, you can drag drafted pawns by holding right click. Number 14. This is a basic trap hallway. At the end you need at least 3 sandbags. Pawns can't stand still on sandbags, so this way you force them to enter your kill box. With the door set up like this, your pawns can reach every individual trap without having to cross over another trap and potentially triggering it. As you can see, forcing enemies to go through a trap hallway is an easy way to weaken the wave before it hits you. Steel traps are fairly expensive to keep rearming, so I recommend using wooden traps if you live in an area with a lot of trees. Number 15. When you make a freezer, you build a room with at least one air conditioner. The issue is that if you face it outwards, it is a weak point that raiders can easily get through. But if you place it inside like this, you will warm up your hallway. Warming up your hallway isn't necessarily bad if you live in a cold biome. But in the normal and warm biomes, it can be deadly or warm up your fridge beside it. If you remove the roof tile here, the hot air can escape and the air conditioner is not a weak point in your defense, nor will warm up your hallway. Number 16. You can smooth stone walls and stone floors for beauty without using resources. Smoothing marble even gives you extra beauty compared to other stones. See, it went up from negative 1 to 2. Number 17. If a room in your base is on fire, do not just hold open the door. 
The open door will indeed let some heat out, but it's not enough. As you can see here, the heat still rises. The intense heat will injure, down and even kill your palms. So instead, destroy the door or wall to the outside. This way the temperature inside and outside will be exactly the same, as the room is no longer considered a room by the game, but part of the outside. Now you can safely send firefighters in to extinguish the fire. Number 18, you can check the chance of your shot hitting its target by hovering your cursor over the target. Here you can also see what influences this number, like skill, weapon, cover, weather or many other factors. This also works if a raider is shooting at you and you want to check his chance of hitting you. Number 19, the room on the right is dirty while the one on the left is clean. If we check the info tab we can see that the dirt decreases the research speed to a final value of 68. The room on the left has sterile floors, so it is as clean as it can be. If we look at the info tab again, we can see that the final value here is 79%. It actually gets a small bonus due to the cleanliness of the room. So research is faster in a clean room. And finally, number 20. When I just started playing, my storage room always filled up way too quick. One major tip is that you don't have to store everything inside. Store raw resources outside as it doesn't deteriorate. Keep in mind the plants matter and wood do deteriorate. But wood does so at a very slow pace, so I store it outside anyways. In the early game, I often also make a separate storage spot in the water for tainted apparel and rotten corpses, so it deteriorates faster. And that's it! 20 tips and tricks that I wish that I knew when I started playing RimWorld. If you are a more advanced player, I got the perfect video for you that's on the left side of the screen right now, and I'd love to hear if I was able to teach you something new, or if you got any tricks yourself. So let me know in the comments, or tell me on Twitch. I stream there way too much Grimwald anyways. You can find a link in the description below. Anyways, I wish you all a great day and I'll catch you in the next one.